everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and this is day four of Book Halloween. Let's get going. So I don't particularly mind about meaning vampires, but they're just so cliche and cringy. Like I want a real vampire book, you know, something like Dracula or something like that, but hopefully this list will feed you well, if you will. <laughs> But anyways, let's get going. So my first book is In the Forest of the Night by Amelia Atwater Rhodes. By, the day, by day, Riska sleeps in shaded room in Concord, Massachusetts. By night, she hunts the streets of New York City. She used to being alone, but someone is following Riska. He has left her black rose, the same sort of rose that sealed her fate 300 years ago. 300 years ago, Riska had a family. A brother and a father who loved her. 300 years ago, she was human. Now, she is a vampire. A powerful one. But her past has come back to torment her. My next book is The Book of Azrael by Emma V. Nicole. World Ender means Ender of Worlds. A thousand of years ago, Diana gave up her life in the deserts of Elora to save her dying sister. She called upon anyone who would listen, not expecting a monster far worse than any nightmare to answer. Now that she does what Caden asks, even if that means securing an ancient relic from the very creatures that hunt her. Now enemies older than time must put aside their differences and work together in hopes of saving both the world and every realm in between. My next book is The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. To you, perceptive reader, I bequeath my history. Late one night, exploring her father's library, a young woman finds an ancient book and a cache of yellowing letters. The letters are all addressed to my dear and unfortunate successor, and a plunger into a world she never dreamed of. A labyrinth when the secrets of her father's past and her mother's mysterious fate connect to an inconceivable evil hidden in the depths of history. The letters provide links to one of the darkest powers that humanity has ever known and to a centuries-long quest to find the source of that darkness and wipe it out. It is a quest for the truth about Vlad the Impeller, the medieval ruler whose barbarous reign formed the basis of the legend of Dracula. Generations of historians have risked their reputations, their sanity, and even their lives to learn the truth about Vlad the Impeller, 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 and Dracula. Now one young woman must decide whether to take up this quest herself, to follow her father in the hunt that nearly brought him to million years ago, when he was a vibrant and young scholar and her mother was still alive. What does the legend of Vlad the Impaler have to do with the modern world? Is it possible that the Dracula of myth truly existed and he has lived on century after century pursuing his unknowable ends? My next book is Of Shadow and Moonlight by Luna Lavia. Cassie was never able to experience the life that many take for granted the freedom to de dedicate her own journey. No, her life had been spent sheltered, protected from an inevitable fate that will come for her regardless of what anyone could do. After her medical condition goes downhill, she is left with a few years of breath in her lungs and a choice, die alone, without ever experiencing what it truly means to feel alive and free, or to find that light, that missing puzzle piece, that feeling of not feeling so alone in her final days. When Damien appears in her life, her world turns upside down when he shows her the hidden magic that lies in the shadows of her world and within herself. Suddenly plunged into a hidden war that has raged for countless centuries between gods and monsters, Cassie begins to feel the weight of her secret, which she has kept hidden all her life. My next book is A Multitude of Dreams by Myla Rutherford. Princess Imogen of Goslin has lived a sheltered life for three years at the boarded up castle. She and the rest of its habitants, safe from the bloody mortar, mortarologian plague that's ravaged the kingdom. But Princess Imogen has a secret, and as King Stuart descends further into madness, it's a great risk for being revealed. Rations dwindle each day, and the happy murmurings threaten to crack the facade of the years long charade being played within the castle walls. Nico Mott once enjoyed a comfortable life of status, but the plague took everyone and everything from him. If not for the generosity of a nearby lord, Nico may not have survived the Mordiologist's aftermath, but does owing Lord Crane his life mean he owes him sacrifice? 
But does owing a lot of in his life mean he almost in his silence? My next book is The Vendant Games by Mike Houston. Blood is survival for 17 year old Blake, who lives in a poverty stricken human village and caught between enemy vampire and rich kingdoms. Most of the time, vampires and rich lives in uneasy truths, buying human blood for the food and spells. But for two weeks a year, the ceasefire dissolves and they hold the Vendant Games. Any human can play in the games for either the witches or the vampires. Alongside life-changing riches, the witches will raise one person from the dead for whoever captures the highest ranking vampire. In turn, the vampires offer mortality to whoever captures the most powerful witch. For most humans, the games are a ticket out of poverty. For Blake, it's a chance to get back her dead sister. At least, and save the life of her dying best friend Emerson. Together, she and Emerson forge a dangerous plan to play both sides and win both restoration for Elise and mortality for Emerson. But when the vampire they capture stirs a passion in Blake that she hasn't felt in a long time, she will have to make her a sister or the boy who showed her, showed her there's more to life than just survival. My next book is The Blood Confession by Alison and Lily. Drawn from the true story of a 17th century countess who banded herself in human blood to preserve her works forever, this chilling novel, combining gothic horror and romance, follows beautiful as a bit, as she tells the story of her wife while waiting to be sentenced for murder. My next book is The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Burbent. The adopted human daughter of the nightborn vampire king, Onaya, carved her place in a world designed to kill her. Her only chance to become something more than play is entering the Kejali, a legendary tournament held by the goddess of death herself. But winning won't be easy among us the most vicious warriors from all three vampire houses. To survive, Oria is forced to make an alliance with the mysterious rival. Everything about Nahin is dangerous. He is a ruthless vampire, an efficient killer, an enemy to her father's crown, and her greatest competition. Yet what terrifies Oreya most of all is that she finds herself oddly drawn to him. But there's no room for compassion in the Kejani, more for the House of Night Blues, shattering everything that Oreya thought she knew about her home, and why he may be understand her more than anyone, but the blossoming attraction couldn't be her downfall, in a kingdom where nothing is more deadly than love. My next book is Opinion and Apistine by Lydia Kong. New York City, 1899. Tilly Pembroke's sister lies dead, her body drained of blood, and with two puncture wounds on her neck. Bram Stoker's new, new novel, Draco, has just been published, and Tilly's imagination leaps to the impossible. The murderer is a vampire, but can it be? Can it? And ravenous reader and researcher, Tilly has something of an addiction to truth, and she won't rest until she unravels the mystery of her sister's death. Unfortunately, Tilly's addicted to more than just truth. To ease the pain from an in recent injury, she's taking more and more London them, and some of her immediate circle are unhappy unha to keep her well supplied. Tilly can't bring herself to believe vampires exist, but with the hysteria surrounding her sister's death, the continual vampire explains, and the opium swelling through her body, it's becoming increasingly difficult for a girl who relies on facts and fingers to know what's real, or whether she can trust those closest to her. My next book is The Stars Are Dying by Chloe C. Penalanda. In the world abandoned by the celestial gardens, are left to suffer a tyrant's king reign. All Australia knows is the safety in seclusion. But fragmented memories of only five years of her life, she's determined to discover more about her past. Even if that means playing the cruel arms that hold her safe from the wicked vampires rumored to roam the land. Once the bargain is struck, Astria's chance to escape comes in the form of accompanying her best friend Cassia to the king's central. There, on like royal territory, is the centenary of the Lampentrium, Limitatum, a succession of trials hosted by the king in which five human lands compete for a cycle of safety from the vampires sinking blood, claiming souls and savaging after dark. So when strategy strikes, Astria must decide if taking the place of a murdered participant for the safety of her kingdom is a ruse is worth dying for or of protection 
and the ancestors have passed really are the strongest designers. My next book is Wings Once Cursed and Bound by Piper J. J. Drake. My wings are bound. I am that I am the thigh bird planters, the canadi, and no matter the cost, I will be free. Bender Andrews represents a secret organization of supernatural beings dedicated to locating and acquiring mythical objects, tucking them safely away where they cannot harm the human race. When he meets Piriafan Latahan, it's too late. She has already stepped into the red shoes, trapped by the curse to dance her death. And of course we have the classic vampire that started it all, Dracula by Bram Stoker. When Jonathan Harker visits Transylvania to help Count Dracula with the purchase of the London house, he makes a series of horrific dis discoveries about his client. Soon afterwards, various bizarre incidents unfold in England, and an apparently unmanned ship is wrecked. Off the course of Whitby, a young woman discovers strange punch marks on her neck, and the inmate of a lunatic asylum raves about the master and his imminent rival. And my last one is Invoking the Blood by Callista Neath. What could happen in 15 minutes? Faye agreed to her sister's brilliant idea to sneak into the Hunter's Moon Ball, a night the vampires and attendants held sacred. Lusting under the eerie glow of the blood red moon, Faye was no vampire. She wasn't even a trait race that possessed magic. Her ceremony failed, making her an Anarian, a mortal without magic. After a run in, in with the Shadow Prince, Faye begins dreaming of him. His youthful gaze leaves her feeling cherished after she wakes. A pleasant daydream since men like him don't exist, not for women like her. But as days pass and dreams intensify, the Shadow Prince comes for her. His gaze filled with the same yearning he held for her during their shared dreams, until he realized that she is an Anarian. Abducted and confined in his home in hell, Faye is left with only with his promise to release her after he breaks the time bindings to his life to hers. But with each heated exchange, she can almost see the man that longed for her in her dreams, the one who cherished her and tempted her heart. Okay, those are all the books for about vampires. Let me know which one you like to read or let me know if I have missed any. Otherwise, please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. I will see you in my next one. Bye!